Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth, your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of the business Skein of a Different Color. And yes, as you can tell by the title of this video, we are doing a two unboxings. We are first and foremost going to be doing a yarn yay as that is the box I have right now at the point of filming. And then I will have a segment where I will be unboxing a leather's box for the month of February. And then at the end, I will show both of the projects together, kind of like how I did at the end of December, actually. It's getting to that point in the month now where I need to get on this and no more excuses. So I've got a cup of coffee with me, got the paring knife, got my Yarnier box, and decided to dress up a little more bright and colorful today just because it is a dark and gloomy day. And oh my gosh, you know how that goes. Sometimes you just want to dress up all in black when you see that it's dark and gloomy. Other times you kind of want to combat it with your own style, which I chose the latter, obviously. So without any further ado, let me have a sip of coffee and then we will get right into the box. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh, I love coffee. Seriously though, I actually had to uh, cut back on coffee a little while ago just because of how much of it I was drinking. And so now I have cut down to one cup a day. And if I do have a second cup, it is a half calf. So because of how much it has been recently affecting me, I decided that would be best. And it has actually been working out for the better. But before I start rambling on about things not related to yarn, let me just go ahead and slice right on to, into this box. And of course, there's an airplane flying on overhead. If you hear that, then that's exactly what that is. Both of my kids are down for their naps. So I have all the time in the world basically to open this box. And I've been seeing the, all the beautiful pictures, but now you can see it too. And looks like we have some bright and colorful floral wrapping paper, which is also kind of shimmery, kind of shiny. And it looks like we have four things in here. So let me just go ahead and put this box over. Let's see, where do I want to put it? I think I'll just put it over here underneath all my other created items. And I will start off with this woven basket. This is so pretty. I love it. I actually have been looking for more things like this, even when I go thrift shopping. And now that I have this, I can add it to wherever here on my creation station or even next to my bed where I can like put my glasses in at the end of the night or something like that. And then looks like inside the basket itself, we do have this cute little yarn yay little pocket thing right here. It's got a little bit of a pouch feature right there, which is adorable. I don't know exactly what it's going to be used for or what the description is because I haven't gotten into the magazine yet, but that is okay. And Looks like we do have a button. So whatever project it is that we're working on has a button feature, which is so cool. And this is what the button itself looks like. And looks like the camera is actually picking up on the detail today, which I'm very happy about. I love that button, actually. It's really pretty. It actually reminds me of some coconut um, wood. Coconut wood? I don't know if it's actually a wood that you would call the outside portion of the coconut, but it reminds me of that, those kind of buttons and that kind of thing. And then moving right along, and of course that's not gonna to wanna to stay up, so I'll just plop it in the basket right there. And then of course, we have the yarn for the month of February, and it is this stunning white and multicolored yarn right here from the company Taki Yarns. And this is in Gunnison. In the Gunnison line, I believe it is, and this is 57% wool, 43% polyacrylic, and I'm guessing the polyacrylic is the colorful fibers that are inside. And this is 100 grams at 105, 185 yards. Excuse me. It does recommend an H size hook, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. And it doesn't say what the actual color is on the label itself. It just says 2001 with a dye lot 2016, whatever that means. Well, I do know what a dye lot means. It means that batch of dyeing, but whatever. Anyway, so that is the yarn that we have for this month. Let me just put my coffee uh, down here so I can put the yarn right here. And now with any, without any further ado, let's just go ahead and get into the magazine. And yes, it looks like we do have a loose leaf that I will just be putting right back in the box to be taped up later. 
So shawl color cowls is the theme for this box, box number 46. And I like that they are actually labeled because it makes organizing the patterns that much easier. So without further ado, uh oh, was not expecting them. <laughs> All right. Uh, hand woven and one of a kind this month we've gone unique and beautiful baskets perfectly sized to keep your notions nested big blue mama is a canadian based woman owned company that employs over 350 women in ghana to learn more go to the website that i will link down below and i will actually just slip that right in there okay now getting into the magazine <sighs> so this month's yarn evokes the spirit of warmth and coziness. When stitched up, the loft of a single ply Italian wool mixed with a polyacrylic strand of color makes for unexpected pops of color. Taki Yarns was founded by Stacey Charles and a part of the web's catalog of yarns. Learn more at the website that I will link down below. And I will link all the websites down below as always so, so that I don't actually say that for every little thing. A shawl collar patterns designed by Vicki Howell and designer in residence Julia Madil. This month we're saying we're saying shawl, y'all. Shawl collar cowls, that is. The knit version designed by Vicky is knit flat, collared with a sim with simple short rows, then creatively seamed. The crochet cowl designed by our spring summer designer in residence combines third loop rib with short rows. Both are topped off with a large button, as you saw right there. Uh, found horn button. So it is a horn button, not a coconut button, which is actually nice because I'm allergic to coconut. This found horn button, this found horn beauty adds a mixed media warmth to any wool project. Put a button on it. Makers Merchantile is owned by button lover uh, Karen Skasel. Learn more down below. And then the leather heart bookmark. So it's actually a bookmark. Okay. I was actually not expecting that at all. So looks like from what I understand then, if you want to just like bookmark a couple pages or whatever, you just put it on like that. That is actually so cute. I love that. All right, putting that right there. All right. Leather heart bookmark. Let the heart mark the spot in your favorite knitting or crochet book or our booklets, which I might actually use because sometimes it's really nice to have something that weighs down the pages. And I find that sometimes when I don't have anything that weighs down the pages, then it's really hard to stay on the same page kind of a thing. But anyway, before I yammer on anymore, so the pattern, the crochet pattern for this month is called Yacht or Yacht Rock. I still don't know how to pronounce um, Yacht. It's either Yacht or Yacht or however else you want to pronounce it. I've heard it pronounced many different ways. Uh, Shaw Collar Cowl by Julia Madil. And he uses a hank of that. It also uses a size J crochet hook, not an H, so they're sizing up a little bit. And then a large eye tapestry needle, already have that. One locking stitch marker, which I already have, but I am looking at the pattern right now and I think I'm gonna finish it just like that. Um, and then of course the button and then sewing thread and needle, although truth be told, I more than likely will be using the yarn itself for that just because, you know, it's easier, might as well. All right, so that is what it looks like right there. And maybe it'll decide to fully focus, maybe not. I don't really know. I don't really care, honestly, because you'll see the finished project at the end anyway. But that is actually looking really pretty and I love how it is seamed up. Let me just use this to cover the majority of the pattern. So that is what the finished project looks like when it is laying flat. And it's actually kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting to get a cowl. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. I was expecting to get a cowl, but I wasn't actually keeping that in mind when I decided to wear my most recent cowl that I finished. And I cannot wait to get a uh, I cannot wait to go ahead and get right on into this pattern because it looks like it will be really quick and really easy to work up and it will also be a stunning accent piece to whatever I decide to wear it with. So without further ado, let me just go ahead and skip right on over to Leather's box for you. And I am back just a couple days later because as you can see on my creation station, I do have Leather's box. So let's just go ahead and get right on into it. I'm looking a little extra gussied up today, sporting my anniversary cowl that I made and actually finished yesterday because the day that I am filming this is actually on our five year anniversary. 
So I'm a little bit more gussied up because my husband is getting the kids ready to get dropped off at mom and dad's. And then after that, we will be enjoying a very much needed overnight getaway, just the two of us. But anyway, let me just go ahead and open up Leather's box for the month of February. And once again, they're sticking with a more um, a simple appearance just to keep a cost down, which as a subscriber, I definitely appreciate not having to worry about a price hike or anything like that. And so without further ado, slicing right into it, putting the knife back right there. And let's just go ahead and open this thing up and ooh, we have this pretty magenta. Mm -hmm. We have this a pretty magenta organza bag right there. Uh, kind of like a magenta fuchsia pink, whatever. But anyway, before I ramble on, it looks like we have an actual like physical pattern this time around, which I am not mad at at all. So we have the under the sea blanket pattern in addition to the Nemo triangle cowl which is what we will be making with this month's yarn. And there are a couple of announcements right here, but I will save that for myself because I am a subscriber. So I'm just going to put it right there. And now I'm getting into everything. So let's just see. Okay, so this is the February 2022 Anemone Fish Collection. And I'm just going to call it the Anemone Collection because that's just what the image is on the front of the postcard that has the QR code for the patterns. But since I have an actual physical pattern, I will stick with that for the purposes of completing the project. But that is the inspiration photo that Le that Ashley had for the month of February. And it's so cute. It's so Finding Nemo. And it definitely makes the Nemo triangle cowl make all the more sense. And so before I get into the hank of yarn itself, let me just go ahead and show you the stitch markers as best as I can. Because you know my camera doesn't always like to pick up on smaller details. So that is what the stitch markers look like for this month. We have a cute little fish in addition to a orange stone right there. It is just so pretty, so fun, and very much on point and on brand for this month. And now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on into the yarn right here. And this is the Anemone Fish um, Sport Weight yarn right here. As you can tell, we've got some beautiful pink, some blues. Any blues? No, green. That's what I meant. <laughs> I was looking at the uh, one of the ties. And I thought that was a blue part of the yarn, but it's not. So we got some brown, some blush pinks in a way, some green, and definitely some vibrant orange right there. And I cannot wait to go ahead, wind this up, and get on started with the project. And then for the hook, we have a D-sized hook. And it's got these beautiful shades of purple. And I watched the unboxing video on Ashley's YouTube channel, and she said that when they were um, exploring different ways to do the wood on the wood turner, I think it's called. I'm probably getting that completely wrong, but whatever. So when they were exploring different um, ways of doing the wood turning, then they found out that this, or actually discovered that this looks more like a fish. And so they decided to reserve that for this month's box. And I am very glad that they did. Now, I do have Yarnier's project all completed and done and ready to be shown to you. But before I do that, I've got to work on Leader's project. So without any further ado, let me just go ahead and finish up this project after winding up the yarn and I'll see y'all with both of the finished projects. It is now about a week since I received my Yarnier box and I have completed both the projects for Yarnier and Leather and as you can tell they are right behind me on my creation station so without further ado let me just go ahead and get on into it. Starting off with Leather's project, this adorable Nemo cowl took a lot of time and a lot of work because it was made using sport weight yarn, which is actually a size I don't really like using. I prefer to use no lighter than a DK weight yarn, but nonetheless, it turned out beautiful. I love how well it drapes and I did some steam blocking to kind of you know, smooth some things out and everything like that. And I think it turned out really gorgeous. I absolutely 
Love the colors, especially seeing as we have a clownfish and a sea anemone for the inspiration photo. It is so cute and adorable and oh, I just cannot wait to add it to my Aleather collection of goodies that I have created. And I do have about this much yarn left over. Now, I didn't actually end up using the hook because as I have said previously, I do prefer working with an inline crochet hook as opposed to a tapered crochet hook. But regardless, this is definitely going to make a beautiful addition to my collection of crochet hooks right there in that little vase right there or a vessel or whatever it is that you want to call it. Almost looks like a goblet to me. <laughs> but anyway, so I am really happy that I decided to buckle down and actually finish this project because truth be told, there were some points where I felt like it was taking four stinking ever but it was actually really helpful to have a written pattern out this time around because I was able to make notes of how far I got and actually I decided to cut it about six rows short just because, you know, I didn't want to fin like finish the rest of the six rows and also I wanted it to be not too drapey and not too big for a triangle cowl and I think I definitely um, achieved my goal with that and it is still so pretty even though I did shorten it up a little bit. Now I did also make a notation on the pattern itself of how to shorten it if you wanted it to be more like a bandana for the head or something like that and oh I just love the colors and everything and the pattern was actually really easy to follow. I mean and it has beautiful textures right there that including a stitch that I have not worked with before so that was really nice being able to expand my um I don't know my skill set in that regard and then I did not actually get around to using any of the stitch markers as you can tell they're still attached to the card that it came on um, just because I did have another stitch marker that was already in my project bag and I decided to use that instead. But now these can go right in there and I do have a fair amount of yarn left over from the project but that is okay. I am just going to plop it right there in my remnants bowl over there. And now moving right along to Yarn Yay's project, that one actually did not take that much time at all. I would say it only took like maybe four hours max just from like point of winding up the yarn to sewing on the button and calling it good to go. But it is so pretty. Let me just go ahead and put it on. Um, I do remember when I was just getting started with crocheting and there were a lot of patterns that it was really like my go-to's and one of them actually was collars like this, like collar cowls. And I just love it. It kind of brings back that nostalgia for me as far as like my early days with crocheting and everything like that. But I absolutely love it. I like how the striping happens and the feel of the wool is not scratchy at all. In fact, it's like really soft. I might go ahead and steam block it just like a little bit just so that it can be smoothed out even more and every good thing like that. The button, which is actually um, hor a horn button, not a uh, coconut button, I was able to work with it no problem and I decided to use some of the extra yarn that was left over for the buttonhole itself and making sure that it's all snug and secure and I might actually just wear this for the rest of the day because it's so comfy cozy, I don't want to take it off. But I will take it off just to show you a little bit more of the detail. So with the fold over part, it's actually worked in short rows, which I didn't really know what that meant at first. I thought that it was like, you know, worked width wise as opposed to length wise, but no, the fold over part is actually worked in short rows. So from here, I do some uh, stitching right there. And then after that, I join it in with the rest of the project. And uh, I just, it was a lot of fun. I will actually be more than likely working this up again with some other yarn that I have, but actually expanding it to be more of like a, I don't know, not a cowl, but like maybe a shawl with a button detail like that all over again just because it was really easy to work up and with how the rows are because these are half double crochet rows it'll be really easy for my rendition of the pattern to just go ahead and attach the yarn along the side to finish it up or what have you but i will be wearing this for the rest of the video because it's so super soft and super comfy cozy 
once again, the pattern was actually very easy to follow, which is something that I was very delighted, very delighted to find out. And once again, that is the photo of what it would look like or what it should look like. And I think I got the expectation versus reality on points, which I'm very happy about. And I did not block it. I, like I said, I am more than likely going to steam block it a little bit later just so that it can be nice and soft and the wool fibers can lay a little bit nicer and flatter and everything like that. But I do have a fair amount of yarn left over right here that is just going to go right into my remnants bowl. And I didn't actually get around to using this heart shape bookmark thing just because I worked on it just like that. <laughs> like I basically worked on this while my kids were taking their naps. Speaking of which, Alexandra is watching Lilo and Stitch 2 and our daughter is still asleep. Thank you so much for bearing with me. I just had to take care of a couple things before closing out this video. But before I do that, just a quick reminder, I do have a giveaway still going on and I will be announcing the winner on the 5th of March, which is a Saturday. And I will be using the comments in the giveaway video. So go ahead and follow the link in the description box down below to see all the details from what is included in the bag to the rules and everything like that. I can't wait to see who it is that will win the giveaway. But another thing that I do need to mention is that unfortunately I will not be able to continue with Yarnier or Leather after the month of March and even Knit Crate because some financial things came up and also it coincides with when those annual subscriptions run out. And so because of the financial situation right now, I just will not be able to renew those subscriptions at all. But I do have a Leather box box a leather box coming in April in addition to the rest of my crochet society boxes that I made sure to start in January so last month and so I will still be having those to unbox and show off to y'all in addition to my first Friday podcasts and everything like that but before this video gets too long let me just go ahead and close out here once again my name is Elizabeth your friendly neighborhood introvert and founder and creator of the business Skein of a Different Color. And I'll see y'all later. Bye!